So I'm going to narrow it down to three things that I've learned. I've been an entrepreneur for a long time. Uh, since I was a kid, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. My parents were both entrepreneurs and were successful. And I had businesses. I, I made a BMX super ramp. I sold bike jumps. In college, I had a vending machine business. Uh, I made airplane tires that would have less tire wear when the planes landed. I've been an entrepreneur since I was a kid. And my first sort of real business that I started was a company called Answer, which was software for the newspaper industry. And that was acquired. And then I started a company called eBenefits, as Ezra mentioned. And the idea there was to be cloud-based HR, like Workday, like Salesforce.com, but for HR. Um, a little bit ahead of our time on that, but that was acquired as well. It was also venture backed by investor firms like DFJ. And then I started Pearl.com. So Pearl.com is a website where people go when they want to talk to a doctor or a lawyer or a mechanic or a veterinarian or accountant or any kind of expert online 24-7. So I'm going to teach you my three main lessons I've learned as being an entrepreneur. Lesson number three is that the most important thing to do when you start a new business is not what many people think. Many people think, oh, I've got to go get a patent or I've got to go got to go write a business plan, or I got to go form my LLC, or find investors, or perfect the technology. I fundamentally believe that the most important thing that you have to do when you're starting a business is figure out if customers actually want it. None of this stuff matters until you find out if customers actually want what you have to offer. They're going to, and if, if possible, see if they'll actually pay for what you're offering them, or, or do whatever you think that, that they're supposed to do. That's the most important lesson um, in terms of starting a business, what the first thing to do is when you start that business. So as Ezra mentioned earlier, I took that to heart when I started this business. I had started two businesses before, and I had a basic idea of the framework of how I wanted to start this business. And the framework was, I'm a programmer, I'm a marketer, I'm going to spend a month programming my website, I'm going to spend a month marketing this website, and I'm going to actually see if customers want what I have or not. And at the end of two months, I'm either going to can it or I'm going to keep going. Pearl.com was actually my third idea, and I'll tell you the other two. FileFun.com was my first one, and the idea was at the time, right when iTunes was launching, this is about 10 years ago, um, the idea was, hey, what if there was a secondary market for files? So you buy an MP3 for 99 cents, and then you can, if you don't like it anymore, you sell it to somebody else for 50 cents. That was the idea. I launched right at the same time. I was hoping the digital rights management would allow for this, and of course it didn't. So that was real quick, uh, in and out, that failed, done fail fast. Um, my second idea was a little bit more embarrassing. A DVD rewinder. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That wasn't my second idea. Um, my second idea was embarrassing, though, in, in hindsight. So the idea was to, was to bring services to the internet. So I ended up doing services on the internet. I thought it was a big market. Create a marketplace, services on the internet. And so I thought, how am I going to get customers? I've got to do something that's kind of viral and people get excited about. And, 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 and I'll sort of start with this business that lets you have an auction on the internet for dares. <laughs> this is my second idea. So the idea was you'd get on there, you'd say, I dare you to uh, put a pie in my boss's face. And then there's a marketplace, and one guy says, I'll do it for 50 bucks, and the next guy says 49, and next thing you know, some guy's putting a pie in your boss's face for 50 cents. That was the idea. Um, I launched it, I built it in a month, I launched it, I marketed it, I got a bunch of people all in my two month period, and I very quickly realized this is not the kind of business I wanted to be in. Uh, it didn't quite go the direction I was expecting. In, in hindsight, it's kind of obvious, but um, you know, I was kind of hoping it would be more playful, fun things and less uh, crazy. Um, you know, the, fu the funny story here, actually, and I, and I forgot the name of it, but like five years later, some company actually had this exact idea, raised like $5 million of venture capital. Uh, they're not around anymore. So they should have done what I did. Um, they would have saved a lot of effort. So what I actually did when I started Pearl.com was, was my wife, Sarah, was pregnant at the time. And she had lots of medical questions being pregnant for the first time. She's a little bit of a hypochondriac. <laughs> and so she called her doctor. 
And she's not got all these questions about, I feel this weird bumps and jumps and kicking and stuff. Is it okay? Is the baby okay? And the doctor said, oh, typical first time mom, make a list of all your problems. I'll see your next appointment in a month. I'll answer all your questions then as long as you can fit them in eight minutes. Not quite what she was looking for. So I decided to build a website where Sarah could talk to a doctor anytime she wants, and that's what we've done. We're now in, seven, we're in 196 countries. We're, we've got 10,000 professionals. We've got 700 different types of experts. Um, and, and that's the idea. I built it in a month. I marketed it for a month. Customers liked it. People answering questions liked it. And here we are nine, nine and a half years later. Uh, and I spent two years, by the way, just by myself, continuing to do the same basic model. It wasn't just for starting a business that I had this one month, one month discipline. Still today, it's now not even a month, it's a week. Every single week, we come out with new versions of our site, we try it, and we see if customers actually want what we do. Each improvement, test, test, test. Round and round this loop we go. Learn, build, measure, build, learn, build, measure, learn. And that's what we do every single week. And that's enabled us to build a, a quite a substantial sized business uh, on the internet. So, Lesson here, listen to your customers first. Here's a fun gag here. We've, just, we've talked it over and we've decided that you must not really be a customer. <laughs> These guys have not figured out this lesson. So lesson number two, mission and values matter. I know many of you in this room are gonna say, ah, that's a load of crap because I actually thought that about 15 years ago. Um, I sort of, we, I do with the typical mission and values, I kind of not do them, and then finally people would come and they'd say, you have to have one, and I'd, find, I'd write one and I'd stick it in a drawer just to make somebody happy, and I didn't pay attention to them, I didn't care about them, and I realize now I was completely wrong. The second lesson I want to say is that your business is about people. If it's just you, it doesn't matter so much. If it's you and a partner, okay, maybe it doesn't matter too much. Once you get to three or more people, this stuff really matters. And it matters because the mission communicates to people in a clear way why they should work with you. What's kind of where you're going with this thing? What's important about what you're doing? And the vision and, 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 the, and the values communicate to people what kind of people you want to be working with. And you gotta be really clear about that because you don't wanna have a bunch of mishmash of different people with different cultures and different um, agendas and, and different, um, different Confl to, you don't want to be too conflicting in terms of the types of people. You want people to, to have a unique culture. And when you don't, it's easy to, to fail and, and make a lot of mistakes. So we've built a very clear mission, a very clear set of values. And I'll tell you what ours is. Our mission is to help people by providing the number one platform for people to access quality professionals online quickly, conveniently, and affordably. And by doing so, we, can, we think we can improve the world. That's our mission. And so that's our mission. And, and in terms of our values, we started with very simple values. We wanted only people that were smart and fun to work with. And while I'm on this point, I, my grandma gave me some advice about smart. She said, Andy, in this world, anybody with half a brain can get ahead. And Andy, you've got half a brain. <laughs> it's very motivational. So that's what we got. <laughs> that's what we got smart. Um, so we had smart and fun. And then we hired somebody who was really smart and really fun to work with, and didn't get anything done. So these things can change. Now it's actually smart and fun and get things done. Those are our three basic, basic uh, values. This is who we hire. Everybody that we hire has to have these three things. And the way to be successful at Pearl.com is to have these three things. And we've even taken it one step further since then, and we've built out a model with the 15 components of smart and fun and get things done. These are the 15 specific values that we've documented and have changed and tweaked over time as we learn and get better. So just like we added get things done, we've added some of these and we've tweaked the definitions and we've tried to really hone in the kinds of people that we wanna hire and how to be successful at our business. And I'm not gonna go into all these with you, but I'll show you two. I go over every single one of these with every single new employee at Pearl.com personally. And now we have 160 employees on our 150 contractors. Uh, Every single one is to go over personally. I go over uh, the whole strategy of the business as well, as well. But I'm gonna go over humble and relentless, and I won't go over the rest. Our business has been very successful so far. The people that we hire, by definition, are very successful. That doesn't mean that we're gonna be successful going forward. 
The only way we're going to be successful going forward is if we keep trying at it. And so being humble is an important piece of our 15 core values. And being relentless is another key part of our core values. Over and over, every week, improving, tweaking, optimizing, making our business better. We're disciplined and we continue to get better, 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 better. It's kind of like Billy Bean baseball. Single, 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 get on base, get on base, get on base, or, or Giants baseball nowadays. Um, get on base, get on base, get on base. As opposed to like Barry Bonds baseball, right? Strike out, strike out, strike out, home run. We're not going for a home run every time. We'd like to get home runs, but we're constantly iterating and tweaking and improving every single time. And so that was lesson number two. Lesson number three is to make a difference. I went and I, uh, I, I, on the way over here, I went to UCSF. I went through the MRI scans over there uh, because I want to do a lot of research for this talk. And I found uh, MRI scans of what people think an entrepreneur has on their brain. Get famous, sex, vacation, lunch, make a lot of money, make more money. That's not what actually happens. This is what actually, <laughs> this is what is really on the brain of an entrepreneur. Sharing your mission, making a difference in the world, hiring customers, core values, and yes, sex is, is there, whatever, especially in men, what is it, 20% of the time? Um, but anyway, so this is, except for this one maybe, uh, what people are living. Venture capitalists, I found one of their scans as well. While I was in there, I also found a scan of, uh, of, of one of our quasi-competitors, Yahoo Answers, somebody that answers questions on Yahoo Answers. <laughs> <laughs> so making a difference is really important. Making a big impact in a big market is really important. You don't want to end up being the 99% of the market, which is a $100 a year market, right? You want to pick a big market and you want to make a big impact and make a difference. And we're really focused on making a difference. Our mission, as you recall, is helping people. Here's people we've helped. You saved my life, right? I won a tax audit, et cetera. My oven works. My car starts. That's what we do um, all day, every day, is we help people, whether they have health insurance or not, whether they can afford a lawyer or not, whether it's 4 in the morning or not, whether they live in a small town or not. Now they have a place to go to get real professional help whenever they need it. And that's my, my, my favorite thing about the business as well. And so I've got a little video here, and I don't know how to play it from here. You going to play it for me? I first used this site when I was teaching English in Europe. And we were going through the immigration process for my wife and my daughter Amber to California. We did get such a good answer that it really helped us to understand the process and to play our part correctly. And then uh, I had a major medical event happen. I, I got a brain hemorrhage. I got a CAT scan and they said there was blood in my brain. They felt that it would be self-healing and they just put me on some pain medication. The pain medication really didn't help much. I was in deep pain. And I have a young daughter and she's the light of my life. And. Uh, Honest to God, truth, I was laying in bed, she was laying next to me, and I was in such deep pain, and I said, God, please don't take me away from Amber. I realized I was in a serious situation. But we live in the mountains in Santa Cruz County, and I was trying to think, how can I get a second opinion? And then I remembered that I had got a really good answer with the immigration question. Dr. David's answer was right on the money. And within 24 hours, my symptoms almost completely disappeared. If I could meet him, I would give him a big hug and say, hey, thanks, you really made a difference in my life and in my family's life. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it makes me proud, too. I mean, that's, this is making a difference. We're, we saved this guy's life. And, and that's the kind of impact I want you all to make in your businesses. Um, Think about that. I mean, and not just for you, but, but the people that you're working with. They need to have a passion for how this, your business, impacts their lives, right? In our, my business, I talked about making a difference and saving people's lives, but it's also about uh, helping people. Uh, one of our, our general counsel, for example, for her, it's about access to justice, right? 
lawyers, people that can't afford a lawyer get taken advantage of by their employers or by their spouses or by their landlords or whatever else. And now for 30 bucks, they can talk to a lawyer anytime they want. Some people, uh, they're, they're pets, right? What do you do with a goldfish? What do you do with a, uh, a, a cow or a horse, right? Now you can talk to a veterinarian online whenever you need to, need to. And that's the kind of big mission I hope that you all have. And so we're making a difference for customers. We're making a difference for experts. Here's a quote from an expert as well. Try to make a big difference. And I'll say one other thing too, and it's not even just within your business. It's also about making a difference in the community. So one of the things that is I'm passionate about, because the daughter that my wife was pregnant with when I started this business ended up getting type 1 diabetes when she was one. And so one of my missions in life is to find a cure for type 1 diabetes. And so I am doing that through the business. So we have an endocrinology category now, and the head of pediatric endocrinology, UCSF, is now one of the, the experts in that category. But that's one of the things that I'm passionate about and, and, and one of the things that we care about. So in summary, my three key pieces of advice for you are make sure that customers really want what you have and use data to find out if they actually like it. Number two, the mission and values really do matter. I promise it'll pay off for you if you write those mission and values down and you're really thoughtful about it and make a difference. So to, lead, to, to inspire a couple questions from you, I decided to leave you with a couple questions that we get on the site just for fun. Uh, can a bank make me take off my sunglasses? It was a legal question that was asked because they refused to take off their sunglasses. Uh, the answer is yes, they can, uh, because you might be a, a bank robber. The other question, if a marriage lasts a month, should they, do they have to give the presents back? Uh, and the answer is, if it's cash, yes. Um, if it's something you've used, maybe not so much, especially socks. Um, <laughs> and uh, my third and final is, uh, my dogs are chihuahuas and they are licking each other's eyeballs. What do I do? So they want to talk to the veterinarian, and it turns out it's very common for chihuahuas to, to do this, uh, <laughs> to lick each other's eyeballs. So uh, hopefully that's inspired you to ask your own questions of me. That's pretty much it. Any questions out there? Andy, did you talk about how many questions are being asked every day? Yeah, we're getting uh, about 10,000 questions a day nowadays. And people are paying for these questions. These two, the other ones. Anybody else? Yeah. Yep. So I, I spent the first two years by myself programming, marketing, programming, marketing, listening to the customers, listening to the experts, tweaking things, improving things. So I didn't have any employees. So it didn't matter back then. So it's not when you're by yourself. It's probably not when you've got one partner. You know, you can kind of see eye to eye on a lot of things and, and, and everything kind of works out. But it's pretty soon after that. Yeah, right here. Um, uh, very carefully. Um, it's hard. I mean, this is a hard business. That's why it's taken me so long to get this far. I mean, it's been nine years, nine and a half years now. Um, and this is a marketplace. So you've got to have both sides of the equation, customers and, and professionals. And if you have too much on either side, it doesn't work very well, as you can imagine. Um, and so it's hard. So you've got to be just disciplined and relentless about just keep getting better, better, and you got to start small and tweak and improve and get better, better. So international, the same with new categories. Every new category that we enter takes the same level of discipline. you got to have the right amount of experts, you got to have the right amount of customers, and you sort of scale them up carefully and methodically. Uh, incentive for the professionals? Of course, yeah. So the experts get a big chunk of the revenues. Um, and so they're making money. Some of these experts are making $40,000 a month answering questions at home in their socks. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, in this case, uh, I was doing it online. So I was able to do it through 
um, online advertising, and you know, these days you could use Facebook and things like that as well. I mean, for a, for a B2C kind of business that's on the internet, you kind of need to use marketing and Google and Yahoo and, and you know, find somebody that, to pay even to try to promote your site, and then you go from there. Um, for, for B2B and other kinds of businesses, it's a different ball game. I mean, you need to start talking to those, those folks and at least getting inclinations for, for whether they're interested. So to be real specific, I mean, for a B2C business like ours, you need to have probably at least 100 people. Like, I had probably 100 paying customers by the end of my two months. But they're paying like $20, $30 each. Actually, back then, it was only like a buck each. I charged a dollar a question at the beginning. Now it's about $30, $35. Um, it, is, which is different from if you're B2B, right? If you're trying to make a $100,000 sale, you know, you wouldn't have to have a paying customer by the end of your two months, but you gotta talk to some of them and they gotta be showing interest in wanting second meetings and stuff like that, I would say, by the end of your two months. That's, that's how I would do it. Thanks. Yeah, right here. Do you, do you require your legal experts to get malpractice insurance? We don't require them to have malpractice insurance. Um, you'll be sorry. What's that? You'll be, you'll be sorry. Thank you. Um, <laughs> they, they have to pass, uh, go through an eight-step quality process. Um, most of them do have malpractice insurance. Um, they have to be verified to make sure they actually are lawyers. So we actually background check to verify they actually are lawyers and they are who they say they are. We also um, have a quality advisory board of, of professors at Harvard and Yale and Stanford and places like that that are reviewing the answers of these folks. Uh, we've got a patent pending quality algorithm, peer reviews, customer reviews, eight different things, that was four of them, um, that we do to ensure the quality of the experts. Back here. Yeah. were useful or did they actually hinder the process? Um, the question was about mentors. At what point, I think, at what point did I, did I need a mentor and then were they useful? Um, so I had, I had a fun thing that I did uh, early on, which was once every month or two, I would find a friend that I respected um, and buy him dinner and tell them all my problems of the business and challenges and opportunities and sort of get their opinion on stuff. Um, and so that's how I kind of did that. I have mentors. My, my, my parents are entrepreneurs, as I told you, and so I had those kinds of things, but, but I was fairly disciplined about trying to get mentorship from my friends and, and people that I respected uh, along the way. And of course, now, I mean, now we're at a fairly large scale, and so we've got a board. Chuck Schwab is on our board and is an investor, and, and and uh, Larry Sansini and Bob Finocchio uh, and Sandy Robertson. Uh, and so they're like my mentors now. I still try to do the, the get together with, with somebody I respect every quarter or so, though, at the very least. And they're very helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like at some point you did take capital, outside yep. capital, but. In, the early, in that first couple of years, say one, two, three years, did you take capital? And if so, how much did you need? I didn't. I, in fact, I went eight years without taking any outside capital. It was just me, first two years, trying to prove the business, getting customers, get, getting experts, putting them together, and kept doing that for two years until I had enough revenues and enough earnings from that to be able to hire my first employee. I actually built the business sort of the old-fashioned way um, for eight years because I mean, like I said, this is a hard business. It's, if I had raised, business, raised money earlier on, I think there's a higher chance we would have failed, actually. We would have failed because the, the, this business takes time. And in order to raise money, you gotta go out and say how amazing your business is gonna be and how fast it's gonna be amazing um, and apply a bunch of capital to that. And we wouldn't have been ready in this type of business. Um, every business is different. But sort of this community stuff, and I know it's hot and it's a buzzword, but it's hard to, to get people, in our case, to deliver quality answers every single time over and over and over again, internationally in 700 categories. Um, and so I, th I think we would have been less successful if we'd done it earlier. Now, we raised money about a year and a half ago when we realized that, 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 that we had those basic things in place and, and, and it was really just a matter of stepping on the gas at that point more than sort of figuring out the basic business model. 
Um, but that's how we did it. And I think my time's up. Thanks, everybody.